Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to this special live I am doing with um, Angela, who I recently just met, and she is the most incredible powerhouse woman. And so I'm so excited to be bringing to you guys um, a session with her where we can hear more about the spirituality of wealth, of pursuing your passions, of getting into your career. And um, this is going to be amazing. So we are waiting for her to come on so that she can join our live. But you can feel free to drop any questions you have about wealth, about your career goals, um, about the, the spirituality of money, right? The place I want to start is that foundation that there is no conflict between being Muslim, being pious, being religious, being a believer, being, um, you know, righteous and having wealth. There is no conflict. We know um, Sahaba that were wealthy. We know prophets, um, peace be upon them, that were wealthy. So there is no issue with having riches, with having luxury, with having material things um, and being a upright, righteous believer who inshallah is going to Jannah. And that's really the foundation that we need to start at because if there's any part of you that feels like wealth is wrong, um, that it's bad to be wealthy or who am I to be wealthy because other people are, are struggling or they might deserve it more um, or they're suffering, um, then you're going to sabotage your own ability to generate abundance and wealth in your life. And a strong believer is better than a weak believer. And how much more powerful would our ummah be if we had people who, you know, had the ability to have, you know, to build large masjids or charitable institutions or start amazing foundations or donate to great causes um, or sit on different boards um, because of the wealth and the prestige and the power and the influence that they had in their life, right? Our ummah would be much stronger. And actually the golden age of Islam was when the ummah was strong in that sense. So this discussion about wealth is um, so important because especially in today's day and age and society, and there's so many different avenues for you to be able to pursue, um, pursue anything that can bring you career success and wealth, and yet so many people are struggling. So what gives, right? Like you could start a YouTube channel. You could, you know, uh, you could start your own business. You could do consulting. You could be a baker. You could, you know, be an, be an artist. You could do anything. And there's people doing anything, making a lot of money, right? Any profession, any job, anything that you want to think about, there is somebody doing it and making a lot of money. Oh, there's Angela. Here we go. Let's see her come in. There she is. Ah! Hey, sis. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. I am <laughs> good. I love that you said that. Thank you. I'm trying to, you know, you know. Yes. Um. <laughs> okay, so Angela's lived in Dubai. Angela's amazing. Um, I don't want to butcher your everything about you no, so i will let fine. you introduce yourself just give them a little intro into what you've done where you've been and where you are now and then we'll get into so much more of all of that we'll get into it i love it okay so hello everyone my name is angela i am the founder of the master businesswoman accelerator i'm also the ceo of the destiny lab uh, which is a multi-million dollar company um I am a life, business, and female empowerment coach, and um, I help women massively grow their business. So i um, been doing this for several years now, love what I do. Um, met Zara in an intentional um, event um, where we decided to connect, and um, just I'm just so excited to be here talking to you about the things we love to talk about the most, which is... Um, creating space and getting ourselves ready for success yes yes okay i love this um 
So, Angela, most of the people listening or who are going to end up watching this are um, either immigrants or children of immigrants. They yes. may have probably come from backgrounds that are not that wealthy, um, either poor or maybe, you know, average middle class, but still kind of, you know, need to keep your nine to five job, uh, you know, can't yes. just have everything luxury. So my first thing I want to ask you about is um, for your own, from your own journey, because I know your story, right? From your own journey, yes. what is like the spiritual hump maybe, or the spiritual um, or a mental thing that you needed to overcome, the mindset shift that you needed to overcome to be able to go from, you know, I can just, I'm just making ends meet, or I, I've got to be, you know, frugal or watch myself to be yeah. able to hold a lot of wealth. You know, that is a beautifully packed question. So I'm going to start a little bit about my story. So um, I, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio to immigrant parents. My, mo my mom is a Korean factory worker. My father is a Chinese um, entrepreneur, owns a restaurant. So I, I understand. So I am a first generation. So I grew up in America. My parents immigrated here. So I completely understand. I grew up very, very humble beginnings. Like, like grew up in Columbus, Ohio, where it was extremely country, not only country, but a little ghetto. So ghetto and country. So I had a lot of oppression. I had a lot of challenges to face. But you know, um, growing up, I, I didn't know, like, um, I didn't, I didn't feel that type of like pressure. You just kind of understand that this is the way the world is. Uh, we're working class, you know. I, you know, I was on welfare for like the first seven, eight years of my life, so I, I, I completely understand that struggle or living in in a working class or poverty environment where there's not a lot of resources. So what shifted me from going from that to where I am now has been an entire journey, but I will say that it starts with mindset. It starts with an extreme belief that you can do it. So one thing my mother had always taught me that I am so grateful for is something that she didn't even have herself, but she knew that I needed, which is the power of education. And I'm not just talking about systemic schooling. It's the power of wanting to learn more, knowing that you are going to figure it out no matter what. That is a muscle to know that you can solve things and that you will figure something out, that is going to plant the seed for true entrepreneurship. And I tell this to all my entrepreneur friends, yes, you should do some, you should start a business that you're passionate about because you're gonna need passion to fuel you when times get hard, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you like what you're doing, you're not gonna go the extra mile. But if you love what you're doing, you're, you're gonna put in a little more work than you usually do. And you're gonna need that because failure is inevitable. So what I learned was, uh, I learned quickly that um, I might not have the nicest things growing up, but I was so, I was so inspired and enthralled by books, by you know going to school, by being doing my work, being steady, and knowing that if I if I did this course, that it would get me out of the hood, right? That it would get me out of the ghetto. That I would have opportunities. I would look at traveling books. My family and I did not travel for vacation. We just didn't have that kind of income. So I would just dream about. I would I was vision boarding before vision boarding was a thing, right? <laughs> I would dream about New York. I dream about California. I would like read about these places and I like start pouring that into my heart when my when I was very vulnerable when I was very young. So um, I think we got a little off track, but I think the, the biggest thing for me is you got to have an attitude for gratitude, really. Um, to be in the mindset like God is blessing me, the universe is blessing me, um, no matter where I am, even when it's hard. That sets you up for success because you feel like you have a can-do attitude. Mm -hmm. And when you have that kind of belief in yourself, then anything is possible. When you know that God has not forsaken you, when you know that everything he's doing is for you, even when it's hard. So and how did you cultivate that belief? Because okay. sometimes, especially being an immigrant child, right, and seeing other people have it easier, um, 
Mm -hmm. It can feel like, well, you know, maybe it's for them, but it's yeah. not for me. Maybe, you know, maybe God's gifts are for some, but maybe I'm not on the list. Mm. I don't know if you felt that way, but. Um, oh my gosh, all the time, you know? Okay. Um, especially. So how did you overcome that? Yeah. Yeah, like, especially like being a female, um, being a minority, being a tech CEO, you don't see a lot of female minority tech CEOs. So. I, I had to get into a mindset that um, that what God has promised me is for me. And it starts, if you, if you really want to know, it starts with self-love. Mm. That might sound cliche, but you have to give yourself permission to dream big. If you cannot give yourself permission to dream big, then nobody else is going to do that for you. Even your own parents, really. We expect our parents to validate us. And, you know, especially if you're in a meshing or codependent relationship with your family, you expect your family to validate you. I will tell you this. My parents are the hardest working people I know. And they value safety because they just fled their motherland to get here, you know. And so for them, being safe being grounded, having a safe job, a safe corporate job, Angela, like having a benefit, having 401k. Isn't that important to you, Angela? Don't you want those things? And, you know, I have been so blessed to grow up in America and having that groundedness from my parents that I was able to dream bigger. And so I have to have that gratitude for my parents that, you know, they wanted me to take a $40,000 a year salary because that's the most money my family had ever seen. My stepdad, mm -hmm. is a, my stepdad is a chef and a mechanic. My mother is a factory worker. We've never seen that kind of money. So they're like, Angela, $40,000 a year? That's crazy. That's so good. You need to take that job. But there was something in me. It was a manager job, which is nothing wrong with being a manager, but there was something deeper within me that was like, no, I think I made for a little more. And that's not to say my parents are wrong or that they think less of me, but I was blessed with the capacity because I worked at, because this whole generation has permission to work on their emotional wellness, to work on their emotional being. So I started really giving myself permission I was like, you know what, maybe my parents won't understand, but I understand God. I, I really do. And I'm going to hold true to that. And it's hard. It's hard when the world tells you differently. It's hard when your own parents tell you differently. But when you start to yes, love yourself. Okay. I wanna... mm, go ahead. No, I just really want to underscore this for, for everyone. Like what you're sharing here is such gems. Like, because um, I tell people this all the time, like the permission and so it's so powerful to hear that you, you know, you were offered a job, $40,000 is more than, you know, your family had experienced, like, this is amazing, this is great. And you gave yourself that permission to, to dream bigger, to aim yeah. higher, to go yeah. for something more. Yeah. And that you realized that you were the only one who could give yourself that permission. Like your parents yeah. were not going to give it to you. Their parents yeah. are scared. They want to be safe. This is safe. Um, mm -hmm. And I just love how you're saying, like, it was really hard because I think that people don't appreciate that to get to a higher level of wealth, you have to forego a comfortable level of wealth. Oh, my gosh. Every work living your truth will never be comfortable because it's something ordained in you that's going to change the world. If God or the universe puts a purpose in you and it moves you, it obviously has to be a message bigger than the status quo. Yes. And so we have to truly believe that we are, we are worthy of our dreams. And that can get diminished over time. You know, you, you look at children, they have such big dreams. They want to be an astronaut. They want to, you know, be whatever. They want to be a scientist, a rocket scientist. And then something happens along the way and we get we get taught to um value playing it safe to value like having a corporate career and there's nothing wrong with that i have lots of friends that work in corporate but if you have a dream of starting your own business or becoming an entrepreneur like let this be your sign like there is a path of abundance for everyone 
for everyone. Like, you know, I have a multi-million dollar company, but there are billions out there, sis. There are hundreds of billions of dollars just waiting for us to tap into that, you know? And I thought I was doing big because, you know, I made two million. I was like, oh yeah, I'm on this road. But, you know, um, what shifted my mindset, it's, I want to talk a little bit about manifesting, is um, when I made my first thousand dollars, mm. it feels just the same as I, when I made my first million. There wow. was such a euphoric, like, I, I made that sale. I got that sale. That was me. I did that. It's the same feeling when you make a million. It's this level of gratitude, and it's almost like it's that feeling. You, you, you tap into that emotion, and it's going to be there from you at the beginning and the end. You follow that emotion and not necessarily what you see but what you feel to be true. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, like I, I, um, I remember – so I believe that change comes from either really big insight or really big pain. Like you're not gonna change if you're comfortable. If you're comfortable, you don't want you don't want things to. Our bodies naturally wants to stay in homeostasis. If we do a little things outside, fear is normal, right? Um, think about when you're working out and you're starting something new. Your body's in pain, and it's like we like our comfort zone, but you know that you have to sculpt yourself, and there's going to be pain involved. So if you know that on an instinctual physical level. Why would that not be the same in the spiritual world? You're going to endure some hardships and you're going to be scared. Like, let me tell you, it never gets easier. You just handle your fear better. So it was scary yes. investing. It was scary quitting my corporate job. That was really scary. It was, mm -hmm. it was scary um, spending my first $500 to get my license. I had never spent that much money on my own business. Had I known that God was going to bless me with a million dollar business, I would have gave that $500 like nothing, but I was so scared because you, mm -hmm. I didn't believe, but I did. I, but I did believe, but like, like shaking, you know, yeah. shaking to get my license. So when I got that first license, um, I kid you not, things started manifesting for me. Clients started coming to me like, and, and I do believe you have to show the universe you're ready. You have to make room. So now that you believe, you've got to lean in. You believe that this is, you know, God's will for you, right? Um, mm -hmm. Like, Yeah, what, okay. So I love that when you're saying like, you've got to show the, show, you know, show God that you're ready. Um, yeah. Because I often tell my clients, right, like, we feel like we're waiting on God. Like, okay, God, you know, I'm waiting for you to like make this company work or to get me this promotion or to, mm -hmm. you know, change my relationship. But God is waiting on us. God is waiting on us to take the act, yeah. to act in faith. And so mm -hmm. you mentioned two moments that I'd love for you to share more about how you took that act in faith. So the first was um, in your, the first job that you were offered for 40K um, yes. how did you, t you know, right? What was the, the thinking to go against your parents and to act in faith on like, I believe there's more for me. And then even here in this, you know, the second example that you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. So I'll start then. So that was, that was maybe like five, six years ago, but I was offered a store manager position for $40,000 a year. And like I said, my family had, you know, I come from really humble beginnings, so my family had never seen that kind of money before. So they were in my ear telling me to take this job, take this job, take this job. And I actually didn't say no. I took that job for six months. Okay. I took that job for six months, and let me tell you what happened. I was so unhappy, and mm -hmm. no matter what I would tell myself, um, I, I started becoming depressed, and I... I started drinking, I started getting into very bad relationships, and I was very demotivated. Mm. And so we have to listen to our body. When we are in pain and when something feels so wrong and we're doing it for all the wrong reasons, your body is gonna let you know. So I, I just knew that that was not the position for me. So like I said, big change only comes from 
big insight or big pain. And the Lord okay. knows I am super stubborn. So he like <laughs> hit me in the head <laughs> and he was like, you know, you're not happy. So it, it hit me when I just couldn't get out of bed anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, and I just knew that like, this was not the job for me. So after that big pain, I knew that I had a dream and I um, started, I actually read this book called The Secret mm -hmm. and I started just vision board. I didn't tell anybody. I was just like writing in my journal, like I am going to be in marketing and this is, you know, I'm a, sto I'm a store manager. So I really yeah. didn't know how to pivot into marketing. I was like, I'm going to be in marketing. And okay, I, wait, but before we get into that part, I want yeah. um, people to appreciate that that big pain, like, you know, mm -hmm. you said you started drinking, you got into bad relationships, like you weren't feeling good, you were feeling depressed. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I know that there are many people who are, you know, start going into these different coping mechanisms. Um, okay. But they don't mm -hmm. see it as like, oh, this I'm, you know, I'm feeling so bad because I'm you know, I'm doing, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not living mm. the way I'm supposed to be living. I'm not pursuing my passion and my purpose. They see it as like, there's something wrong with me. I should be happy and grateful and okay where I'm at. And, you know, it's yeah. bad. It's bad that I want more. So let me, let me just, you know, they don't reckon, like you recognize that like the, the, what, what I, what am I inclined to do is letting me know I, I'm not supposed to do this job. Like this job is, you know, yeah. killing my spirit. But I feel like there's a lot of people who are feeling the pain of it killing their spirit and take it as a sign like I need to be tougher. I need to s just stick it out longer. I need to stay yeah. here more. And so I, I don't know if you have any insight or what thoughts you might share with people who I may do. be thinking, yes, okay, tell us. <laughs> I do. Okay, so I believe that um, God has so much to give us, but we have to listen. And he only speaks through us, through our deepest emotions. And I don't believe, uh, I do believe that he will tell you your dreams and your desires, but he whispers it to you. And they're like, and I, I know people are like, well, why doesn't God put a big old billboard sign with like big old directions? And I believe he whispers our dreams and our desires to us because he needs us to get close mm. and he needs us to get very intimate because from when we get closer to the universe, to God, to our spirit, then that's where miracles happen. And that's where dreams come true. That is the only space that we can activate miracles. We cannot activate it from the mind. We can't activate it from our eyes. It has to be in, in a deep, sacred place. Mm -hmm. um, and I was not tapped. I didn't want to tap into it. I didn't mm -hmm. want to tap into it because I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was living in fear and I wanted to be comfortable and I wanted to validate my parents. And I, you know, and I, it, it was for all the wrong reasons. So when I started saying, Angela, like my little girl, my little spirit inside of me, I was like, Angela, you can tell me what would make you proud. Mm -hmm. If I could give you anything in this life, what would you want? Mm -hmm. And she started telling me and God started Aww. telling me. Yeah. So I started listening, okay. but that is a very sacred place that we have to, we have to honor. And God will only whisper it to you because it requires a degree of self intimacy. Oh my gosh, I love this. Are, are you guys listening to what she's saying? <laughs> <laughs> so get close to yourself. Give yourself permission to dream because the world, it's a crazy world out there. Mm -hmm. And everybody got their thoughts. Everyone has their opinions. But what is the conversation that you are having with yourself? What is the conversation that you are having with the universe? That's all that matters. That's all that yes. matters. Everything okay, else so follows. Just to, again, I'm just going to be underscoring everything Angela says, because, <laughs> like, I don't want you guys to, like, be missing these gems, right? <laughs> what did she say? Get intimate. Get, like, God wants you to come close. He's whispering, right? He's whispering, and it's not yeah. out of, um, that God can't be loud or can't put up a billboard. Mm -hmm. 
appreciate the message and then B, to have the strength and the courage to be able to walk it out. So you got to be still, be quiet, get close to God. What is that? Prayer, contemplation, reflection, all of the things that are commanded in Islam for you to do, right? Yeah. Remember, yeah. pray, reflect, contemplate, meditate. So when you do that, you can hear God's whispers. And when you hear God's whispers, it still might be scary, right? As Angela's story, like, it's still scary. It's still hard. It's still uncomfortable. It's still going against your parents or going against the world. Um, mm -hmm. But when you feel now like I've got this close companion of God next to me, all right, I'm going to be brave and do this super scary thing because, you know, I'm feeling the strength of God with me. Yeah. Oh and everything will be scary. Like you are always going to have challenges in life. Like if you accept that as the default, I will always have challenges in life. But what are the challenges worth having? Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that are going to build me to becoming the best me possible? Those are the challenges worth taking risks for. You know, you want to sacrifice your mental health. You want to sacrifice your one life that you live so that you can live in a status quo. That is not what you are built for. And when you get intimate with yourself and you are honest with yourself, you will honor yourself. And I know that we are all built for greatness. I know that as true as day, we are all built for greatness and there is plenty yes. for everyone. I've literally seen it with my own eyes. And if a poor country ass Korean girl from Columbus, Ohio can own a million dollar company Really, you cannot look me in the face and, and tell me something is impossible. I have seen miracles. And so Zara and I are on the same path where we're here preaching the good word and letting people know that anything is possible. Anything. Yes. Even if you guys don't believe it, we will believe it for you. <laughs> <laughs> we will hold space. Like, you know, we like, will. give permission. Like, that is my biggest, biggest, biggest mantra. Give myself permission to dream big. That is yeah. your only job. And you will okay. lean into it. It will feel so right and so aligned and so good that it will keep calling you. And if it's to start that business, write that book, you know, go into that relationship, whatever, it's, it's going to come from such a righteous place that you will have, you'll be so motivated to move. And that's where the passion comes from. Okay, that's another beautiful gem, right? You'll be motivated to move, right? Whereas when it's not in alignment, like you don't want to do it. You're mm -hmm. dragging yourself to wake up, to go to the job, to do the work, so, uh, right? And that is a sign. Like how Angela started, right? She's like, God communicates to you through your deepest emotion. That emotion of like, I am dreading this, is God saying, it is not for you. If you mm -hmm. are dreading you know, talking to the person who's supposed to be your significant other, that's not the relationship for you. If you are dreading yeah. going to work, that is not it, right? So your deepest emotion, like you will be motivated when it is right. And even if it's scary and, you know, you've never done it before, but you'll still feel like this energy of like, but I want to try, or I just, I gotta, you know, maybe I can, like, there will still be a piece of it that is like, in, inspiring you right the inspiration yeah. in spirit that will be pulling you to to move forward be motivating you so i love how yeah. you Thank now you. you were getting into the part where you're like um you 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 started you saw the secret and started vision warning so i want to basically for you to transition there it's like that that god kind of gives you more signs gives you more support gives you more like oh, yeah. okay you know okay so share so keep going i could cut Absolutely. you off no thank you no thank you for having me um so i i wrote in my journal in 2017 um that i was going to be a millionaire i was going to be a millionaire i was going to be a ceo and i was going to be fit. I had all these goals. Okay. But the biggest thing I'll, I'll talk about today was I was going to start my own company. I was going to be the CEO of my own company. And in 2017, I did not have a job. I just want to emphasize that. Like I wow. was in and out of jobs. I was living off my savings. I was, um, 
I was barter trading with a friend. So he let me crash on his couch in San Francisco in return to do his social media. So I was literally, I was literally living on fumes. Like I remember like splitting a Trader Joe's sandwich, you know, and it was like, it was $7. I was like, okay, I just like, I'm going to eat this 350 lunch and then I'll have these 350 dinner. So I, I know how it feels to be in the hard part. Like, that's the, that's the that's the training ground and all I had was my belief was my belief in myself and I was like well I have nothing else the least I can do is is stay true to my journaling stay true to what I believe in so I would watch YouTube videos and I just like keep writing my affirmations I'm a millionaire I'm a CEO da, 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 da. you know and I'm eating my seven dollar Trader Joe's sandwich like and I'm really just trying to figure it out and I think the breakthrough came for me was that um, that I needed to make room. Like I was like, there was this feeling. I, I was running one day, and that's kind of like my meditation. I'm active, like active meditation. I was running, and I just got this download, and it just felt so serene. And I and I felt the universe telling me like, you know it's been given and like you just have to go for it so that's what I was telling you like I um I got the $500 license this is me telling you I had literally living off savings you know and I I literally had a, a few thousand dollars in the bank like literally living my whole life off my savings and I took that money and I got a license Cause I was like, well, I got saying care. she's got her business license, her LLC, yeah, my LLC. So I got my LLC because I was like, well, if I'm going to do business, like I need to get a license because I feel like um, a big contract is going to come in. I mean, a big contract is going to come in and I have to be prepared for it. And I'm, I'm telling you, as I'm preparing for this license, I'm shaking, I'm crying. My best friend is my lawyer. She's the one who got the license for me. And she's like, you're doing the right thing. Don't worry. And I was like, you don't understand. Like, I, I don't even have enough money to eat. But that's how big my faith was. And I was like, I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. And I told myself, and this is, I think, I really believe this is where the universe tests you, tests your faith. And I was like, I'm living off savings, but I don't give a F. Like, I don't care if I have to be a waitress or an Uber driver. Like, I will continue my dream if I have to make more money on the side, like I put all my ego aside. Cause you know, I have a master's degree. I have a bachelor's. Like I was really like sitting in my ego waiting for something to come to me. And I was like, mm -hmm. I am going to hustle. I don't care if I have to be a waitress to make this dream work. If I need more resources, I will do it. I'm not going to let this dream die either is when I got my first five figure contract, literally within three weeks of getting my license, setting that intention, starting to look at honestly, like, like waitressing jobs and looking at how to become an Uber driver. Um, it was just like an inevitable <coughs> faith that came over me. And then that's when the first contract came in. And so I believe that we prepare for our success. We have to do our part. We are co-creating with God. So he has everything. He has everything ordained for you. So ready. But would you be ready to be a millionaire? It's been a journey for me. Like, and it's not like, oh, here's a million dollars. Like, here's a million dollar business, Angela. You need skills now. You need to learn how to be a boss. You need to learn how to delegate. You need to learn how to manage a team. I am so grateful for the path because the path prepares you. And if you did not have the path, you would not be prepared. And I would lose everything. But because of my process, I have discipline. You cannot take anything away from me because I know exactly how to get it back. And that is- Oh my goodness. That is the gift of the journey. Yes, that is the gift of the journey, right? God is not stalling you. 
He is preparing you. He is preparing yeah. you with every skill, every mental shift, every spiritual grounding that you are going to need in order to be able to enjoy and sustain and grow the success that you want. Because yeah. you don't want to get a million dollars to lose it the next day or to lose your friends and family or to have a terrible illness right but you, you wouldn't burn even yourself out to get that. there you want to get it and be thriving and have everything um uh, exactly so i i believe journey of that i i just believe i know i know that sorry there's like a little lag sorry. zara there's a little lag lag yeah, it is lagging. Oh. Okay. Okay. We're, I, I see you now. Okay. So, um, no, as I was saying, like, you want a million dollar company. Go get it. But just know that it will be a process and be thankful for that process because you are being prepared. People want to go in the gym and they want to lift 100 pounds. Like, you have to be on a journey for that. There's training involved. So now I'm even like in your love life, you want, right? You want that husband, you want that healthy marriage. You have to prepare yourself. You have to prepare your, you know, your mental, emotional and sexual discipline for marriage. Like there's a discipline involved into gifts and rewards from the universe. And I know that, I know that to be true. So I, I feel I feel very blessed and looking back in hindsight, if I could share anything with the people listening today, is that you've already been given your gift, whatever you desire, if you truly believe in it. And it has come from God himself and you know it to be true in your heart. I hold that for you. I know it's true. Trust me, like coming from a family that made less than $20,000 a year, I've never seen the money that I have now. I am breaking generational curses for my family. So you know what? God was gentle with me. He's like, I got to educate her. I got to give her financial education. I have to give her structural education. I have to teach her how to be a boss. I have to teach her how to lead a team. These are things that came with a million dollars. It wasn't just hand. It's not a lottery. It wasn't like, here you go. Go spend it. Go shopping. Go whatever. It was like, here's a discipline that comes with it. And I, and I hope that makes sense. Yes. It's the, it's the becoming, right? Like who, becoming. you know, there's the version of you now, and then there's that higher version of you, the million dollar version of you, the multi-million yes. dollar version of you. Uh, and that version yeah. of you is different, right? Like, yeah, the, the Angela that was, you know, uh, working as a manager is a completely different than CEO boss Angela. Right. Okay. So I have a great, so the coach in me is kicking in. So for everyone listening, if you're feeling inspired today, work on your affirmations, but ask yourself, what would I be willing to give up today to become the person that I am going to become? If I was truly preparing for the best version of myself, whether it's, you know, for me in 2017, it was a million dollar Angela. But the, the goal is changes now, it's just speaking financially, it's the $50 million, Angela. And the game completely changes, right? So if you are working towards starting your company or, you know, getting that amazing dream job, whatever it is, ask yourself and just imagine because you don't know the path. God is your personal trainer. So he's going to put some exercises for you. But just ask yourself. But what would I have to do to make room? Mm. Maybe I would have to learn to be on time. Maybe I would have to learn communication because I'm going to have a boss team I'm going to be working with, right? Maybe I'm going to have to learn to really embrace my financials. Like these are the gifts. These are, these are the training grounds for you. So it's already been given to you. Like, trust me, it's already been given to you. Had I known that this was going to come, which you never do, you never do. So had I known in less than six years, 
my wildest dreams were going to come true. I would have stayed less in fear and more in hope and gratitude. I feel I'm getting emotional just saying that. I would have, it's a reminder to myself, like I would have learned to just be thankful even when it's hard. Even yes. when it's hard. So I wish everyone here like the best on their journey. Um, anything is possible. Anything is possible. And what Angela said about like when you, you know, you make your ask, it's already given to you. I want to put that in Islamic terms for you guys, right? That when you are making your prayer, when you are making dua, Allah says, I hear and accept. I hear and accept all prayers. What does that mean? Like mm. it's been accepted. It's been granted, right? So it's really just a matter of when. It's just a matter of when. And the, the, what Angela is sharing through her story is that holding on to the belief that it is coming, that, you know, that uh, everything is preparing me for it, um, allows you to reach it. Because it's mm -hmm. when you're like, well, I don't know if it's coming. And oh, all of these rod roadblocks must mean that maybe it's not for me. You're, mm -hmm. you're the one who's going to give up. It's not that God didn't have it for you. It's that you will give up. You will give yeah. up. You will stop. You will turn another way. You will try something else. You will stay in the thing that sucks, that you hate. You will keep using whatever coping mechanism you're doing. You yeah. will not be able to pursue the path because you do not believe the path is leading you there. What it is, the path is yeah. leading you there, right? I love how um, you said God is your personal trainer, mm -hmm. right? Like if you've ever had a personal trainer um, or if you've ever worked with a coach like Angela or I, right? Like sometimes you're like, what is this exercise? Like what, you know, I told you I wanted to do my abs and you got me out here doing, you know, some sort of weird, whatever, arm movements, like mm -hmm. what is going on? But the trainer knows mm -hmm. the path, like, okay, we got to strengthen your shoulders so that it goes, yep. so you tighten your core and whatever, whatever the thing is that they need to do. Because this is, this is the way to get to the goal that you want. So if you just mm -hmm. allow yourself to trust God, to trust that he is leading you to the destination that you want, and even better, even more expanded, even more amazing, um, then you can be more grateful, right? Like that's always yeah. like the hindsight, right? And that's when you allow yourself, you know, they, it's so cliche to say, um, you're, you, you want to enjoy the journey. You want to enjoy the journey. And I used to hate that. I used to hate that so much. Like, I do not enjoy this journey. I am just trying to get to the destination. I don't care about this journey. I just want to reach the goal, right? I just want to become the millionaire. I don't care about this mm -hmm. journey. Um, but the way that you go is the way that you'll arrive. So if you mm. are going yeah. through the whole time, annoyed, frustrated, angry, whatever, when you arrive, you will still be annoyed, stressed out, anxious, frustrated. And yeah. you think you need to get to that destination because once I reach it, I can be happy and relaxed. But if you don't, no. Train yourself to be happy and relaxed <laughs> on your way. Yes. You will. That that was even yes. a le learning lesson for me that if I just if I just burn myself out, I work, you know, I hustle, I hustle night and day. Like then when I get to a million, I'll relax. No, it's a state of mind. So I work as hard and as efficiently as I can. Um, I clock out at six o'clock. I spend the rest of the evening with friends, family, and loved ones, um, and I replenish myself. So even in my journey, I'm learning about work-life balance, you know, and that is so essential because when I feel relaxed and recovered, I am more aligned, right? And there is nothing more valuable than the CEO. So I have to remind myself of that. I cannot burn myself out. And I would say, extending on exactly what you're saying, Zara, like, that attitude of gratitude, like I mentioned earlier, it's the same feeling, guys. Tap into your emotions. When I made a thousand dollars versus when I made a million dollars, it was the same level of like, oh my gosh, I got this, you know. And that's that feeling that's going to carry over. You think you're going to be happy when you're you have a million dollar company. And please listen to me. You are the same person. Like the vessel only changes if you change the vessel. And um, yeah, yeah, enjoy the journey. I know that sounds so cliche, but with the most endearing time, like looking in your eyes and I'm telling you, 
if you know that you've already, if you believe it, you've already been prophesied over, you've been ordained, this is your dream, you know it to be true in your heart, just know that you are being trained for greatness. And I, now that I know that, now that I've made it to a multi-million dollar company and I've learned all these things that helps me sustain that company, now I can see God revealing, okay, what do we have to go from the next, from 1 million to 50 million? And that is a completely different game. So now I'm talking about funding and I'm talking about investing, right? And that's not what, you, so I, I don't want to, I don't want to bombard people with information, but just know that every step is a journey and you're going to be learning different things. So if you're just starting out and so whether you want that dream job in corporate, prepare yourself. I'll tell you one thing. So I used to be the producer for Tony Robbins. And so I didn't know a thing about being a producer, but I knew that I wanted to work in the transformation industry. And I put Tony Robbins or Oprah on my vision board. And I said, I'm going to work for one of these people. And so that was my biggest dream at the time. I tell you, I'm a very powerful manifester. So how did I prepare for that interview? I didn't just go in like sheepishly. I literally visualized just like an athlete, like an Olympian before they go into a game. They literally visualize them winning, how they're going to make the win. So I got really still. I meditated and I visualized how I would win that, uh, not win, but how I would get that job at Tony Robbins. And I knew so deep in my heart, I thought about how I'd be working with the team, how my day would look like, you know, like the kind of projects he would put me on. So with that mindset, that mindset of confidence, I went into the interview with a proposal. Who goes into an interview wow. with a proposal? And I let the team, Tony Robbins team know what I could do for them. And here's what I think we should be doing next quarter. That's how prepared I was because I knew I was gonna get that job. And I went in and I started asking them, well, tell me about the team. Tell me how I would work with them. Like, tell me who's on my team, right? Tell mm -hmm. me about like mm -hmm. how I would be traveling. I own that conversation and that is the difference. So then, okay, so that's for people trying to start their dream job. Let's say you wanna mm -hmm. start your own company make room make room if you were to own a bakery let's say you want to own a bakery what would be on your menu like what would be how what location would you want it at like how would it feel what kind of ideal customer would you want start planning it start giving yourself permission to think about these things because when you do become the bakery owner you're going to have to answer these questions anyways so lean into your future, help your future self, help yourself, help your future self. So that's, that's my advice. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. I love this kind of wrapping it up, but yeah, this um, idea of like, you know, the things that you're doing today are setting yourself up for tomorrow, right? Yeah. So if you're Netflix and chilling today, is your CEO self tomorrow going to be glad that you did that? They were like, no, mm -hmm. why didn't you plan out our team or our next quarter, our other product launches, right? Just, and it's, again, it's just in your mind. It's just mm -hmm. in your mind. It's just the imagination. It's just the visualization, but it sets you up for tomorrow. So I yeah. love that. Okay, yeah. Angela, please tell us, how can people work with you? What other services do you provide? How can people stay in touch with you? We, we need more. We need to do this yeah. again, and we need more of you. <laughs> we definitely need to do this again. I love this. I love connecting with you. You are my spiritual sister, so I'm just so thankful yeah. that we've connected. Um, if you feel moved or inspired or you're ready to start that business, sis, I have um, a program called the Master Businesswoman Accelerator. So these this is for women who are ready to start their business, or they've been female entrepreneurs for a few years, but they're not sure how to scale. So this is a program I designed that I like wish I had when I was first starting out. It would have saved me so much, so much time, so much stress. And I will tell you, um, I will tell you that this journey of entrepreneurship requires mentorship. If you believe you can do it yourself, you are fooling yourself and you are putting your business at risk. So um, I would say go follow the Master Businesswoman Accelerator um, on Instagram. 
And if you want to find out if M uh, I shorten it, call it MBA, if MBA is right for you, I have a quiz on the website. Take the quiz, figure it out. Hit me up in my DMs, like ask me questions. Like this is what I am passionate about. Like I, I don't want to mesh Zara and I's experience, but as coaches, I would say that this is what we live for. We live to serve. So yes, like I own my own company. I don't have to be doing this, but I live to give back. This is the kind of structured education accelerator that I wish I had. So I designed this program as a sacred sisterhood for business. So if you're interested, go check it out. Master Business Women Accelerator. Okay, love it. And I'll also have the um, handles um, in the caption. Yeah. So for that. For and sure. yes, thank you so much, Angela. It's, you know, when we connected, it's true. We met at a very intentional event. And then we spent like a four hour dinner together. And it was just the most it. amazing, incredible conversation. Wow. So nourishing. And really for, for anyone watching, for anyone, um, you know, it, it, striving for more, looking to improve your life, the, a huge piece of it is being with other like-minded people, right? Like, of Around course, yourself. we're coaches. We're going to say, you know, work with us, work with us as, as having a coach, but even just peers um, or, you know, our mentor, just like closing up to someone in your, in your work environment that you can just ping off of, but to be with people that have the mentality of like, I can figure it out. I can learn it. A God is supporting me. We, I mm. am, I, it is possible. It, if you don't want to be around complainers, you don't want to be around people who are making excuses. You don't want to be around people who are just blaming the environment and the climate and the, you know, the uh, political climate and all sorts of things for why they can't, why they never, it's not written for me, blah, blah, blah. Mm. They will limit you. They will diminish you. So mm -hmm. your challenge, your work is that God is whispering to you. So the first thing that Angela taught us, right, that you got to lean in close, that God is whispering to you. Yes. And then yes. when you hear that whisper and you start being motivated and pulled towards it, what support are you going to put around yourself to begin to follow the path that is going to be filled with challenges? That's the other thing Angela said, like the challenges are a given. It's not that you're going to yeah, avoid the challenges because you're closer to God. The challenges are going to be a given, but they're going to have a purpose. They're going to have a purpose to get you where you want to go. So do you have the support that will help you navigate those challenges so that they're going to, um, you know, support you to become the next person as opposed to what can happen to some people is that the challenge can crush them and make them retreat back and give up. And yeah. we don't want to see that happen to you because that is not what God is trying to do he's trying to pull you forward yeah. um so the business the i need to master say business the master's business accelerator yeah no. well master businesswoman accelerator is okay it's a lot master's of syllables. business woman accelerator <laughs> yes okay i got it <laughs> thank you okay Bella. guys thank you for joining us angela any final word you want to end on my final word is, if you take anything away from today, let it be this. Give yourself permission to dream big, so big within yourself. Because once you give yourself permission to dream big, you give permission to the world, to the universe, to plant a seed for it. And now we're making real room for your dreams. I'll end with that. Amazing. Give yourself permission, guys. And yeah. inshallah, God willing, we are going to have Angela back. Um, otherwise, this yes. has been amazing. Thank you so much. I'm Thank so grateful you. for you sharing your time with us. Thank you, Zara. I love you so much. Just take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.